I have an announcement to make before we start. So right now on my Instagram, there is a giveaway and that giveaway is to win a chocolate and snack hamper. And it isn't endorsed by anybody. This is coming totally from me. Um, if you want to know more, link will be in the description. It is an absolutely amazing hamper. I'm quite jealous to whoever wins it because I would like it myself. Um, and the reason I'm doing this giveaway is to celebrate a year of Real Simple Recipes and most of all to say thank you to you, to the people that have subscribed, to my followers, people that have been commenting on my videos or communicating through social media. It's been an absolutely amazing journey and I couldn't have done it without any of you guys. So I just want to say a massive thank you. Please keep supporting my channel, keep supporting me on social media. Uh, and hopefully we'll have another successful second year. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Emma with Real Simple Recipes and today I'm going to be showing you how to make rhubarb and custard cake. And this is more of like your spongy cake. Um, so for this recipe today I'm going to be using some baking powder, I've got your granulated sugar, I haven't tried an alternative like maple syrup as of yet, it is something that I would like to do. Um, but the issue of rhubarb, you do need that sugar to get that flavour. We have some soy milk, some vanilla, some custard powder, a stick of rhubarb. You may need two, depending on the size, but the ones in my garden at the moment are massive, so I'll be lucky if I use all that one. Uh, I've got a couple of bananas, so this is for your egg replacement. Some plain flour, and just behind me, which I've already melted down, is some plant-based butter. So that's your flour or buttery that I'm using today. Um, it is my favourite one, as you probably know, I use it a lot of my recipes. Let's get started. Okay, before we start, we need to pop out ovens on. So we're looking for a gas mark for on your ovens today. Let's pop that on. We're going to start by mashing up our bananas. So the riper the better for these because they're easier to mash and they go mushier. Mine aren't very ripe today mainly because I had my shopping delivered on Tuesday. So <laughs> I've, I've used up all my bananas before that. I was trying to save two and it didn't happen. Okay, so that's nearly done. If it is that you don't like banana, you could try using apple puree as your egg replacement. I will put that in my notes on my recipe, so if you want to see the full recipe, it will be in the description below. I know not everybody's a fan of banana, you can taste it a little bit in this, um, but it's not overpowering, so I will put that in there for you as an alternative. So just go to the bottom of the recipe and there's a section called notes, have a look in there. Okay, so that's that ready to go. So what I'm going to do now, grab your custard powder, this is your bird's custard powder. Um, it's quite interesting, I was reading up on birds because it is vegan and it turned out that the guy that originally made it, his wife was allergic to egg. So we made this especially for her so that she could have custard. So that's good. So I'm gonna pop it in there, two tablespoons of custard powder. And I'm just gonna give that a mix together. Good mix. I find it easier to use a whisk. I know there isn't much in there, but I just find that a little bit easier just to give it a good whisk around. You just tip your bowl aside because there isn't much milk in there to use. There we go. Nice and custardy. And what we're going to do is grab our butter and we'll pop that into our butter again. Get another whisk up. Should we get it all out? A whisk. There we go. Lovely yellow, custody. It's yummy. And then I'm just going to pop that into our bananas. The reason I do it like this is just to make sure our custard powder has dissolved. There's nothing worse than having the lumps of custard powder in your food. And I'm just going to give that a mix into the bananas. So this is going to be your wet ingredients. Nice mix up. I can eat this as it is. <laughs> okay. A good mix. It smells delicious. So that's your wet ingredients all ready to go. I say this recipe is super simple today. Super duper simple. 
In a mixing bowl, we're just going to pop in our plain flour. Again, I'm using my Polish flour because that's all I can get hold of. If you can't find flour, have a look in the foreign food sections. Um, that's where I got mine from, from Tesco. I had a look in the foreign food section and there was some Polish flour in there again. So don't be scared to use it. It's the same kind of stuff. Well, it is the same stuff, it's just worded differently. So I've just popped in my granulated sugar into that flour. I'm just going to grind up some vanilla in there. Put that in. And then we're just going to add in our baking powder. There we go. Make sure we get it all out. Put that in there. Okay, so it's all in there. So what we're going to do, we're going to get a spoon and just mix that in. I know people will probably think, why do you do that? What was the point of mixing those ingredients together when you're going to mix everything together? Good way to get a baking powder evenly mixed in around that flour, making sure that you get a nice even bake and a nice rise on your cake. So that's all mixed in. And then we're just going to add in now our wet ingredients. So when I first made this, um, my partner Matt, he turned around and said, you know what? He says, that is really, really nice. I'm not a fan of rhubarb, but that is really nice. It's a bit bizarre that he's not a fan of rhubarb, considering the rhubarb that's in the garden originally came from his house. So it's his rhubarb, essentially. Um, but he said that this, he really enjoyed it. It's a really nice recipe. So it's always good when you get to... Uh, Nice compliments like that. So get that in there. And then what we're going to do with the wooden spoon, give it a good stir. You'll see as you start to mix this, it'll start to look like a cake batter and you'll be like, whoa, unbelievable. I can't believe that it's like a cake batter. I was quite gobsmacked when I first did it. See there already how it's turning cakey. Make sure get all that flour mixed in nicely. See how it's turning into a lovely cake batter. It's got a lovely yellow colour as well from the custard and banana probably. How nice does that look? If you see the little black specks, that's just vanilla. Give it a good mix in. Look at that. That's nice. That is a lovely batter. This is one of those batters that you want to hand it to the kids and say, I'll let the bowls out because this is so nice. Or let the bowl out yourself. <laughs> but to move up. There you go. So it's my cake batter ready to go. So I've got my tin here ready to go. So all I've done is got some plant-based buttery and I've gone around the tin. So this is a loose bottom tin. It's a little bit high really for this one, but it's the only one I've got. I do need to invest in some more. And what I like to do with mine to make it easier is as you can see there, that's the bottom of my tin. I've drawn around the bottom of my tin. And then I've feathered it around the outside, making it so that it folds up. So what I can do then is I can pop that into my tin nice there we go that'll stick down that's this way you won't get a ruffly effect with your crisp of paper make sure that's nice and stuck in there so I've got that stuck in at the bottom so what I'm going to do because I always like to be over thinking with my butter, making sure things don't stick. I'm going to stick down the edges a bit with a bit more plant-based butter, like so. Sorry, I'm very over-cautious with sticky. Sticky um, cakes. I like to make sure I've got loads of spread on, just to make sure that my cake's not going to stick. And then what I'm going to do with these egg pieces, I'm just going to stick them down like so. And this way, 
all being well. I shouldn't get any cake stick and then my cake should be nicely formed as well. And what I'm going to do, just to make sure that I am okay there, I'm just going to run a little bit more plant-based butter just around that grease proof. Okay, so that is our cake tin ready to go. Looks really good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add in our batter. Just give it another stir if it's been sitting around. And just pop your batter in there. Look at that. I had one of these last week when I was first making this recipe and I'm so looking forward to the second one. So make sure you get all that batter out and I tell you what, make sure you lick that bowl out as well when you finish because it's delicious. Make sure you get it all in there and just give it a knock around with your wooden spoon to get it all spread out. One of my little tricks to make this shape. And then just get your bottom a bit of a knock. Okay. Hopefully that'll settle a bit while we cut our rhubarb. Okay, so that's our cake batter ready now. So all we need to do is add the final ingredient, which is your rhubarb. Um, so as I say, one or two pieces. This is huge. <laughs> Let me comparison. There's my custard powder, normal size custard powder, and there's my rhubarb. <laughs> so one or two, depending on your size. I'm not sure if I'll use all this. We'll work it by eye as we make it. So let's get this baby cut up. That is my rhubarb cut up, but all I've done is diced it. And all I'm gonna do is just pop it into this batter. So you can make it nice and pretty, or you can just pop it around. Totally up to you how you wanna do this. Okay, so I'm gonna just pop it into your mixture like so. now my rhubarb custard cake nearly ready there's one final ingredient that we need to finish off get some granulated sugar say about half a tablespoon or a tablespoon and just give it a bit of a sprinkle on top making sure we're not too overzealous we don't want to use too much granulated sugar it's not brilliant for us but sometimes we do need to treat ourselves and that is it, your rhubarb custard cake, ready to go in the oven. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven now for around 40 to 45 minutes. So what we're looking for is you stick a knife in or a cake tester in and it should come out clean. Um, so as I say, that will take about 40 to 45 minutes, but just double check it at the half an hour mark. It's always best to over check than under check with a cake. So I'm gonna pop this into the oven and I'll see you back here in around 40 to 45 minutes. The cake is now done, so I'm going to leave it in the tin for about 5-10 minutes, just cool down a little bit. Uh, and then we'll remove from there, place it on the wire rack until fully cool. Once it's cool, we can then cut into it, have a lovely slice with a cup of tea, um, and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside once it's cooled down. Okay, so I'm going to give this a cut open. It's really soft, really nice. Put it down here. Okay, so you can see there how spongy that is. That looks really, really nice, and I'm looking forward to having a piece later with a cup of tea. It's as simple as that rhubarb and custard cake. I really hope that you've enjoyed this one today. It is a really nice recipe to do, and it's a fantastic way to use up that rhubarb. 
I don't know about you, but right now I've got so much of it growing, it's just nice to have something different to make rather than rhubarb crumble or rhubarb or apple crumble. Don't forget as well to enter that giveaway on Instagram. It is an absolutely fantastic prize. Chocolate and snack hamper, who would refuse that? If you have enjoyed today's recipe, do give me a like. And if you want to see even more really simple plant-based recipes, please do subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any comments, questions, feedback, anything at all, please do leave that below and I will get back to you on them. Thank you for watching.